Good evening mga kabaka. Uh, ngayong gabi po ay uh, andito po tayo muli. Ito po si Arnel Corpus ng Adelaide River Farms. And of course, uh, my partner Paul Alcoriza. And uh, tonight we have uh, a, uh, a guest that uh, that's very active on the cattle industry here in the Philippines. We have guys from Bayonoba Livestock. So we have uh, their chief uh, technical officer, Alfonso Cirano. And as well, we have Dr. X Binayog, our very own, uh, from Bayonoba Livestock. And as well, we have uh, from 5A Breeding Farm, uh, ni our our friend, Nio Abalos. So he's, uh, he's on board as well. So um, this, mo this, this evening, uh, we will ask first uh, uh, Paul to, to, to introduce himself and see his greetings. Paul? Hi, everyone. Good evening from uh, Makati. We're live right now together with some friends. Uh, Dr. Alfonso Serrano and uh, Nio Abalos. And Doc, what's your name again? I'm sorry. Ik, Doc C. Doc. Ik. Doc V. Yeah, yeah. So good evening, everyone, and stay tuned. Okay. So I I will first. Uh, Neo, could you say good good evening, Neo, please? Hi. Good evening, everyone. Magandang gabi po sa lahat. Uh, nito lang po ako. Ano? Um, sumusuporta sa mga kuya ko. Nandito lang po ako. Hindi uh, hindi po ako manggugulo. Nandito lang po ako sa gilid. Promise yan? Promise, hindi ako manggugulo. Behave, ba? Behave. Behave. Anyway, uh, good evening guys. I will introduce to you a uh, few, few uh, introduction for our guest uh, this evening. But of course, uh, once they're on board, they will uh, introduce their company. But uh, this evening, we are very fortunate to have our very own Dr. X uh, Binayog. Dr. X is a... Uh, a veterinarian by profession. He is a uh, uh, the, the veterinarian of Bayonoba Livestock Group and he is also a uh, Bureau of Animal Industry accredited animal show uh, veterinarian. He is a rodeo veterinarian and uh, a rodeo judge, a member of the official judge of uh, volunteers rodeo official of Maspati and of course, uh, the technical arm of Arodio Masbati Incorporated. And uh, he is also a field veterinarian. He specializing in large uh, animals with experience in projection and implementation of health uh, uh, programs, field in la and laboratory diagnostic. So, um, mga kababayan, mga kabaka, uh, let's welcome our very own Dr. X Binayog. Doc? Hello, po. Hello po sa ating lahat. Uh, ito po si Dokix Pinayub uh, ng Bayanova. Una-una, uh, magpapasalamat po kami sa Adelaide River Farms at panguna ni Carnel and uh, Kapol. Maraming salamat din uh, ka Ian Abalos. Uh, Nia, Nio pala, sorry. sorry. Uh, Nio sa pag-ibita dito sa ating, uh, sa ating programa. Oh, okay. So, and as well, we have our... Uh... A very distinguished uh, visitor tonight. He is a professional in animal science from La Salle University of Columbia and a specialist in cattle reproduction from un the National University of Cordoba, Argentina, and with uh, experience in South America as technical director, technical assistant, advisor, and instructor in training cycles on reproductive biotechnologies embryo transfer, micro manipulation, and uh, freezing of cattle embryos. Uh, artificial insemination and fixed time insemination, palpation and reproductive ultrasonography, andronology, seminal quality and semen freezing. So, reproductive management and dairy and beef herd. He is currently the technical, the chief technical officer of Bayonoba Livestock. Ladies and gentlemen, mga kabaka, please welcome Alfonso Serrano. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Arnel. Thank you, Paul, for the invitation. Thank you, Neo, for joining us this time. It's a pleasure to, pleasure, pleasure. to, share, to share this time with you, this um, series of presentation. I think it's very useful for the, for the industry. Thank you so much. Okay, so without further delay, 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will give the the floor to the Bayunova Bio Livestock Group. Okay, so uh, from there, uh, Doc X, if you want to uh, take care okay. from there. Okay, okay. Maraming salamat ka, Arnel. So, uh, ngayon, uh, papakilala po namin ang aming com company, si Bayunova Livestock Group. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, uh, Bionova Livestock Group is one of the first companies in the Philippines to bring the best biotech processes in the cattle industry. So, ilan sa aming service ay ang una-una, ang farm assessment and uh, evaluation kung saan uh, pinapa, pumupunta kami sa mga farm, uh, nag-check tayo, sinecheck namin isa-isa uh, ang health, ang nutrition, ang reproduction, management, ang staff, uh, lahat, halos lahat ng aspeto, titignan namin. And isang service namin ay yung under ng health nutritional and health services na kung saan uh, gumagawa tayo ng uh, feed formulation, feed, especially for fattening, for dairy, or kung gusto natin customize yung ating feed, uh, po pwede din. And ang aking linya, yung health, under ng health services na kung saan um, nagko-conduct tayo ng mga testing para malaman natin yung specific uh, na sakit ng uh, baka. Then another is yung aming training cycle kung saan kukonduct tayo ng mga trainings or usage ng or paano gumamit ng ultrasound and ng fixed time AI. Meron din tayo ng mga under ng genetics and livestock products na kung saan meron tayong um, mga vet supplies, mga antibiotics and ng mga cattle semen, frozen semen. Then ang dairy facilities na kung saan um, meron tayong mga uh, tawag dito mga uh, facilities for dairy and also yung aming isa sa aming forte or linya is yung reproductive services na kung saan uh, naggagawa tayo or nagre-render tayo ng fixed time artificial uh, insemination sa mga baka. We also uh, we are also doing yung tinatawag na embryo transfer And isa sa pinakagusta namin or madalas namin ginagawa sa farms ay yung tinatawag na uh, gynecologic or simply uh, ultrasound. So ilan yan sa mga, ilan lang yan sa mga service na ginagawa namin. Pero this time, uh, magpo-focus tayo kung ano ang uh, meron sa 6-time AI and ultrasound. Next slide please. Next. Okay, so 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 far uh, sa buong Pilipinas, uh, ito yung mga list ng mga farms na aming napuntahan, uh, Luzon, Sayas, Mindanao. Um, siguro ilang farms lahat. Uh, more than 15, 20 cattle farms. Ito ay mixture na ng beef and dairy uh, operation. So halo-halo na siya. Okay, next slide please. Okay, yan ang aming team. Pinapangunahan ni Elfon Serrano. Ako. Next slide, please. Next. Hello. So, sorry. Uh, it's a bit slow, the, ah, okay. the PowerPoint. Can you, can you see that already? Uh, it's still on the team. There. Uh, still in the team. There. Okay, wait. Hang on, hang on, maybe. Ah, there. Okay. So, ngayong gabi, uh, pag-uusapan natin ang meron or kung anong meron sa six-time AI or yung tinatawag natin FTAI and ultrasound. Kasi ang karamihan sa mga uh, karanaak sa dalasang nalalaman ng mga ating uh, kabako ngayon ay yung tinatawag na AI. 
Pero meron din tayong tinatawag na six time AI. Or ano yung uh, advantage, ano yung pinagkaiba ng FAI sa conventional AI. So hindi ito, papangunahan ko na ang mga ating listeners or viewers na hindi ito yung uh, usual na AI na ating uh, nalalaman. So i-discuss mamaya ni Alfonso kung ano ang meron dito. Pero bago yan, kailangan mo na natin alamin gaano ba or ano na ba yung uh, sitwasyon ng pagbabaka ang, ng livestock industry dito sa Pilipinas. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, Ix. Thanks okay. for the introduction of the company. Um, can you see there the, the next slide? Sorry, uh, the PowerPoint is a bit slow. <clears throat> it's yeah. okay now? Yeah, yeah. For the population. Okay. So I would like to start um, just giving some numbers, uh, some important numbers on how or why um, it's important to improve some, um, some technologies in the country. Um, the cattle population in the Philippines is uh, quite small compared to the human population in the Philippines. There are 105 million around people, while the cattle inventory is around only 2.5 million. Hmm. It's quite small compared to other countries uh, that per capita, they have, for example, Uruguay, 3.44 cows per person. Uh, that's a lot, or New Zealand, 2.17. So wh why is this? Why, why in the Philippines is, is happening this? Is the pressure of the system? Um, could be probably because of the cost of the land. Hmm? There are lands that um, they have been used for another purpose. Uh, the cattle is being moving to the uh, poorest areas. The advance of the agriculture, <clears throat> Uh, creation of new markets, um, the requirement of animal proteins that we all know that um, Asia is a huge market for, for all animal proteins, specifically beef, the permanent increased population that I talk about, and the need of producing more liters of milk and kilograms of beef uh, per hectare. Mm -hmm. Okay, talking about specifically artificial insemination in the Philippines. Um, I got this information from the last uh, FCRAP Congress in CDO last year, and I found it uh, something very interesting. Um, we are talking only about artificial insemination, official information. It means um, inseminations did by um, government agencies or um, institutions related to the Department of Agriculture. We, they don't count here the private inseminations. <clears throat> so if we consider 2.5 million population that's counting um, males and females, the breedable females, that means that uh, those are the females that they are ready for breeding, is this number is around a bit less than 400,000. They only did AI in 48,000 of them, hmm? meaning the diffusion rate is only 12 to 13% per year. I'm talking about 2018. Hmm? <clears throat> what was the success? Success rate was only 28.58%. This is considering um, using heat detection only. <clears throat> So we go back to the number. They did 48,000 inseminations, diffusion rate 12 to 13%. That means uh, the percentage of pregnancy is not more than 30%, and meaning we will have, or we had in that year, only 13,000 pregnancies. So it's just for you to, <clears throat> to understand. We have 2.5 million cattle, and we are only having 13,000 pregnancies per year. Why? So what are the challenges uh, that, that um, the Philippine cattle industry is, is having? There are many factors, um, mainly because um, conditions inside the farms, like nutritional conditions. Hmm? Usually the cows are skinny. They don't have the, the enough, good enough body condition score to, 
get them done easily. Hmm? Probably it's because of knowledge and skills from the from the staff in the farms. Um, it's not completely well trained. Cultural factors can be also a factor. Uh, the, the Filipino farmer is uh, quite conventional. Uh, and we understand that because um, it's a farmer that didn't have probably the chance to know and to learn about many available technologies that um, we can use we can use now. A production system that, well, uh, there are many factors inside this. Technical difficulties and logistics. This is a country that is full of islands. Uh, to implement any kind of, of program of project is, um, is a challenge because of transportation mainly. <clears throat> and one, in, uh, one uh, this is the one that I want to be focused today is the inefficient heat detection. Mm -hmm. Okay, so heat detection is the biggest limitation in the implementation of artificial insemination. Why? Because the opportunity of breeding is just in a few hours, depending on the cow. We have the chance to inseminate the cow in only 2, 12, or 24 hours. That's uh, individual uh, difference. Mm -hmm. It's an inescapable, inescapable routine, uh, and it's a routine that leads to mistakes, probably um, the cows going hit on Sunday, the cows going hit in holidays, the cows going hit anytime, and the staff is not there to see the cow. What will happen? The staff will miss the hit, and then they will have to wait in average 21 days for the next hit. Okay. Uh, another mistake, another uh, mistake is don't detect animals in heat or detect animals which are not in heat. This is because of lack of knowledge. I want to quote um, something. This is um, one of the researches uh, in FDI, one of the most important uh, scientists. This is from, from Argentina. He said in a, in a Congress, artificial insemination is the most useful and simple method for genetic improvement in cattle. And because estrus detection is difficult and inefficient, fixed time artificial insemination is necessary. And this is our topic today. So I will start, what is FTI and what is ultrasound? Hmm? So before to give you a concept or the definition, the first thing that you have to, to think about your farm, if you're a farmer or if you want to start a farm, is to establish a breeding objective. Hmm? What is the breeding objective? The breeding objective is the most simply expressed as the ideal product that the farm can produce or that the objective of the farm um, is. Yeah? So you will define this depending on many things. The first thing is the intended market. Hmm? If for you will be convenient to sell beef, to sell live animals, to sell genetics, to sell milk. Hmm? Second, the production system. Uh, management capability, depending on the, stat that, the staff that you have. The environment hmm, is not easy. Uh, the conditions in Cagayan Valley compared to Bukindon. Hmm, so you have to consider the environmental conditions and the current level of herd uh, performance. You have to ask yourself, what do you want to do? More meat, more milk, more quality of those products. You want to produce yearlings. You want to produce pregnant heifers, or you want to produce genetics, pure boons. Second step, um, and I include this, this graphic in, in all my presentations, I, I think it's very important to, to understand, and is the concept of Calvin interval. Calvin interval is basically um, the period between two calves, right? So we have here, if you check here in the, in the left part of the, of the screen, we have the gestation, 280 days approximately, Depending on the breed, but we can say 280 days. Hmm? We have the calving, and after that we have a period, this this uh, red square, that is natural in the cow. It's around 45 days. Sometimes it's a bit more, 50, 55, 60 days, depending on the cow, where the cow will um, will sorry will improve her condition, her natural condition after calving. So is the uterine involution. 
and anatomic histologic. So this is a period where we cannot do anything, right? Just wait, because this is natural. Hmm? After that period, we have to start uh, being very strict. Why? Because we can take action already. We, we have here uh, an open cow. What is the meaning of an open cow? It's a cow that is not pregnant hmm, and is ready to, uh, to have the service, to be bred. Hmm? So we have here our breeding period, right? Before to continue, what is the idea? Is to produce one calf per cow per year, right? That's the idea of all the cow-calf operation. So if we, can, if we want to uh, set this target or to, to, to get this target, to get one calf, we have to be very strict in this period, okay? So after a voluntary waiting period, that is this red part, we have to take action. So we have two alternatives, to wait for the cow to express heat naturally every 21 days, assuming all the challenges that we have um, detecting hits or do something in the cows for making them go on heat when we want. Hmm? So we have to consider many things here. The cows probably, they are ready after the waiting voluntary period for breeding, but sometimes they are not. Um, and that's what we call postpartum anestrus. The postpartum anestrus can be because nutritional effect the cow is very skinny, uh, finalizing the, the calvin. She didn't recover properly. So we have to wait a bit more for that cow to be in a better condition. And the second limitant is probably the uh, milking or the calf at food. The presence of the calf in the cow, it um, affects the reproductive status. So um, it's a factor for the cows to be in an estrus. Okay, assuming we have the, um, the cow pregnant finalizing that period. We have the conception, right? At day 85, 90, we will have again the gestation day, uh, the st gestation period, sorry. And we will have the calvin again after one year. Is this possible? Is this possible to have one calf per cow per year? Yes, but we have to take action in this period. Hmm? So this time artificial insemination is, is a reproductive method that use precise tools to increase first the, the genetics. If you want to increase or improve the genetics in your farm, this is the way, the fastest way how to do it. And uh, it's a viable technology uh, that decreases the infertility of the cows. Why? Because we can use cows that they have a few chances to get pregnant by natural way and include them in an FTI program, synchronize them using a combination of hormones, and synchronize the heat and the ovulation for insemination when uh, we decide to, to, to do the, the breeding. Hmm? So what are the benefits? First, high genetic quality. Second, you are increasing pregnancies in, just, uh, in, in less time than in natural conditions. You are shortening the Calvin season, why? Because if you are shortening the breeding season to two or three or four months, that means that your calving season will be after nine months, but distributed in the same months. You will not have calvings uh, the whole year, right? You will reduce the postpartum anestrus. Um, it generates high economic and return profit. And this is important. In average, the 50% conception rate in only one day. Hmm? So for example, you have 50 cows, you inseminate, you include them in a FDA program, you will have 25% average pregnant in only one day. Another operational advantage is that you can produce homogeneous group of calves. Uh, why is important this? Nutritionally, it's good because you will be uh, designing um, a diet good for a, a homogeneous group. You will not have to feed and a small animal together with a big animal because uh, they have different requirements, right? So in the labor, in the daily routine, will be much better. 
same like in humans uh, is is um is a technology that uses image of tissues and internal organs produced through ultrasound okay with um, high frequency sound waves so basically uh, we use a machine that um, we scan the reproductive tract and it gives us some shades of black white or gray depending on the color um, and the density of the organ, we are able to determine what is happening inside the cow. Okay, so what are the operational benefits of ultrasound? Um, first and most important, we can detect pregnancy as early as 28 days after breeding. Mm -hmm. It's an accurate and early diagnosis compared to palpation. If you are a, a, an experienced palpator, you can do it 45, 60 days, but you need a lot of experience for that. And probably you will have mistakes once in a while. Uh, cost saving and maximizing profits. You are detecting cows that they are not fertile. Hmm? If they are not getting pregnant and you, and you determine the reason for that, you can take action if to sell or to fatten the cow or to slaughter. You will get cash for that. It's some money from an unproductive cow that you can invest in the farm. Hmm? Another um, advantage of using ultrasound is the fetal sexing or aging. You can know the, the, the size of the fetus, the, the age, and you can know the sex, if it's female or male, in the days 55 to 80 days after breeding. You can also detect some um, ovarian structures to know the status of the cow, if they have follicles, if they have a corpus luteum, meaning if they are actually ovulating, if they are fertile. Then also you can detect reproductive problems like what endometritis, pyometra, follicular and luteal cyst. Uh, those are problems that they are very common um, after calving. Probably you can see sometimes a cow that is always on heat and you don't know why she's not getting pregnant. Well, follicular cyst can be a reason. Then synchronization for uh, FTI, synchronization for embryo transfer, and assessment for embryonic or fetal loss. So you can see the advantage of using ultrasound are many. Okay, so the combination of FTI and ultrasound, what, what are the operational benefits that those two technologies uh, give us? First, as I mentioned before, the higher genetic quality. Um, you are improving already 50% of the genetics of the farm using FTI. You are optimizing the labor, the time, and the cost in general. Mm -hmm. You don't need to purchase or to buy uh, bulls because you can get through the semen the bulls that you actually want. You can introduce semen in your farm, bulls from US, bulls from Australia, bulls from New Zealand. Uh, according to the traits that you want to improve, right? You will avoid uh, sexual diseases. Mm -hmm. This is very common in natural mating with artificial insemination, we don't have those problems. Possibility of mating animals with great difference. Mm -hmm. It also helps to maintain records, accurate breeding and calving records. If you know when the cows, um, uh, they were bred, mm -hmm. You will know when they will have the calving, right? You will be prepared for that in nine months or next year. Mm -hmm. uh, your cows will not be skinny. Your, your calves will survive because you know and you prepare when you want to do the calving uh, season. Mm -hmm. Improves in general the performance of the herd to have more unprogrammed calves born earlier. Uh, as I mentioned before, create a uniform calf drop during the calving season. An advantage uh, to get the cows basically pregnant earlier, um, the FTI treatments can treat reproductive issues for non-cyclic cows like anestrous cows or with ovarian disorders. Uh, cows that calf earlier in the season are easier to get in calf the following year. That's the, the head of the group. The, that's the main the main group of the. Um, of the herd is the most important cause and you have to be focused on those cows. You have to detect what is this, um, let's say, elite group in your herd. 
uh, cows will start winning calves earlier and heavier in the year, giving more profits, of course. If you are winning calves heavier and earlier in the time, you will have more money. Kilograms means money. Genetic gain from FDI helps to reach the breeding objectives, selecting by reproductive traits, as I mentioned with the, with the bulls. And the heifer's progeny, the replacement heifers, will reach the critical mating weight earlier, conceiving earlier also in the next breeding season. This is just an example. This uh, was a research um, did in, in Angus, Angus breed. They compare FTI versus natural mating. This is very simple. They just did um, in, a, in a certain group of animals. Insemination, one insemination, and three, they compare it with three natural matings. They found that they can produce 30 to 40 kilograms more at winning, okay? So the advantage of this is, yes, increase the winning weight, the, the calves will burn early, the shorter duration of the calving season, and because of the majority of calves and heifers are pregnant and in day zero, the majority of calves are born early, making them heavier at winning. So the time and genetic merit is the most important factor in this, in this case. This applies for everything. Probably is, is not the case for many breeds like Brahman or another Bosindicus. They don't have this weight, but the important here is the difference between artificial insemination and natural mating groups. Okay, I will talk about conception rates and requirements. The worldwide conception rate has an average of 50%, can be 40 to 60, depending on the case, and will depend on many things. Uh, those variables, we call them requirements, and those requirements, uh, um, some, some factors that they have, the farm should be sure that they, they comply, before joining any program. So first one is the nutritional condition. The cow should have between three to 3.5 in the scale one to five or six to seven in the scale one to nine because um, the body condition score is positively correlated with, with higher pregnancy rates. Um, the health status. It's always important to have the herds with vaccination and uh, the warming programs depending on the, on the program of, of the area. Uh, herds with those programs, they always have better pregnancy rates. Management, the whole operational process may affect directly the performance. Identification, very important. This um, must be properly identified. They should have records uh, up to date, um, including reproductive and productive parameters, at least last Calvin date. Mm -hmm. Facilities, it's important to have some functional and safe facilities for the cow, for the animals, and for the technicians. And nutrition, enough forage, water ad libitum, supply of salt and minerals, vitamins, to ensure um, a good pregnancy rate. Personal, available staff for, for managing the cows during the uh, duration of the program. And the semen, very important, 30% motility, motility of the semen is an acceptable parameter already for a commercial semen. So what are the, the stages of the program? Remember I was talking about 12 months Calvin interval? Okay, so how we do it? First, we select the cows, the cows that they are, um, they are selected after Calvin, that they have more than 45 days. Hmm? We select the genetics according to uh, what the farm needs. We do the preservice ultrasound to all the cows and we select the cows that they will join or they will be subject to the protocol of synchronization. I will talk about the protocol of synchronization in the next slide. Uh, but the idea is to uh, apply a combination of hormones to make them uh, go and hit and ovulate at the same time. So at the end of the program, we will be inseminating all the group in the same day. Hmm? After 30 days, we do the pregnancy diagnosis, 28 to 30 days, and the pregnancy, we just have to wait for having the ones that they still open, we have to decide 
what will be the future of them according to um, the reproductive historial and according to the last uh, ultrasound examination. A bit more of description of the, of the FTI program, the stage A is, as I said, the pre-service exam using ultrasound. They should be open. They can be cyclic or an estrus, but they should have at least 45 days after calving. Wait for them to have the uh, waiting voluntary period. Stage B is the protocol of synchronization. Uh, depending on the protocol, it could be eight to 10 days. And it's customized by category, uh, status, body condition score, etc. Stage C is the insemination without heat detection. We can inseminate 80, 100 cows in only one hour, in, in only one day, two to three hours probably. We only need one technician one day, and the farmer he doesn't need to avail a nitrogen tank, right? We we had so many inquiries about about this, and we don't you don't need to buy you don't need to buy the tank, you don't need to buy nitrogen. We know that it's difficult to get those things in the Philippines. Is not available everywhere. So that's why we offer the program with everything included. We bring the tank and all the uh, implements, all the um, um, equipment and tools necessary for the program to the farm. Stage D finally is the early pregnancy, early diagnosis of pregnancy. It can be 28 to 30 days after insemination. And the fetal sexing can be done 55 to 80 days after AI. So what I, what I mean with protocols of synchronization is simple. This is just a, an example. There are many, many protocols. I would say hundreds of protocol. The protocol will depend on many things. So protocol we call hormones, doses, timing. Mm -hmm. Is designed according to reproductive status after ultrasound. What is the breed we are working to or the crossbreed? What is the category, if they are cow, if they are heifers, if they are dry, if they are lactating, if the BCS, the body condition score is low, we have one treatment. If the body condition score is good, we have another treatment. The facilities and the number of qualified cows. That means how many cows can we process in just a few hours, in two, three, or four hours. So it, it starts with day zero. What happened in day zero is the synchronization of a new follicular wave. Mm -hmm. What is the meaning of that? It doesn't matter what is the stage of the cow. It's like we apply a combination of hormones and we reset the status of the cow. They start all together again in the same stage. We wait for eight days. Mm -hmm. After eight days, we apply another combination of hormones and what we are doing with this, we are synchronizing the heats. Okay, they will start going on heat all together. After 24 hours, we apply another combination of hormones and we synchronize the ovulation. Mm -hmm. In this protocol specifically, it's just an example, 30 to 34 hours after the last application, we do the FTI, fixed time artificial insemination without the need of heat detection. So this is just for, for you to understand why, why it's like that. In the left, in the um, image from, from the left, this is a normal cycle of a cow, right? This is day zero, this is 21, this is day 21. This is all what happened inside the cow. An activity of many hormones, many changes, many things. So what we are trying to do is to simulate or to recreate the last stage of that normal uh, activity. How? Using hormones, using hormonal treatments. Mm -hmm. That you can see another example here in the right. So with the FTI is basically what we are trying to do is that manipulate in a good way, in a positive way, the normal cycle of the, of the cows to make them go on heat, to make them go on ovulation and um, for them to be ready to receive the semen um, in certain day. Okay, reproductive management, uh, some experiences and results that, that we have here in, in the Philippines. What happened after that? 
Uh, I will take some time explaining this. Um, what will happen after the FTI program? You will say, okay, after that, okay, I got 50% pregnant. What will happen? Okay, you have so many options, depends on the operation that you have. But what we usually uh, suggest to the farms that they have cow-calf operation hmm, is after day 10, that is the day 10 of the FTI, we start the breeding season. Hmm? You should set your breeding season, okay? What happened with that? You did insemination without heat detection and you got 50% conception rate average from the FTI. So this is the group that you inseminate and you got 50% improvement of genetics, hmm? depending on the semen that you, you use. After that, you have to wait for 15 days. After 15 days, if you want to join the bulls, you can join the bulls. Why? Because you are not only improving genetics, you can also, you have to also improve the, the whole or the complete uh, pregnancy rate from the herd by producing additional pregnancies from the bulls, from the existing bulls in the farm. So what do we, what do we suggest is to wait 15 days. Day 25, we follow up the bulls after 15 days. Bulls will cover heads from non-pregnant cows. So for example, from 50 heads, 25 here, they got pregnant, 25 here, they will start going on heat again. Hmm? So we take advantage of the, of the response of the cows after the treatment. Those 25 that they didn't get pregnant, they can be pregnant by the bulls. We leave the bulls for 65 days and then we separate the bulls. That's the end of the breeding season. Breeding season with bulls, 65 days, very short, right? So what happened here? The bulls are removed and they will go for recovery for the next breeding season. The idea is to, for you to don't maintain a bull the whole year. That's not um, efficient. What are we taking, what are we getting with this? We are getting additional 30 to 35% conception rate from um, those 25 cows that they didn't get pregnant, right? After 30 days, remember, using ultrasound, we can detect the um, early pregnancy diagnosis. So that's already day, day, 20, day 120 of, um, of the program. We do pregnancy diagnosis by ultrasound. The, the fetus that is 110 day old is from FTI, and the fetus that is 30 to 95 days old is from the bulls. Why? Remember this 15 days period. We have here the FTI. This is the semen from the FTI. And we have here the bulls. This 15 days difference will tell us if the fetus is from FTI or the bulls just analyzing or evaluating the size by ultrasound. Total conception rate. Uh, how many pregnant cows can we get? Again, from 100 cows, let's assume we have 50 pregnant here, 50 open, they get bred by the bulls, they will get 30, 35% conception rate. If we count the pregnancies from the FTI plus the pregnancies from the bulls, we can get 80 to 85% conception rate using FTI and bulls in only three months of breeding season. Hmm? So after that, what will happen? The open cows, if a cow uh, didn't get pregnant through FTI or with bulls after three months, we have to check the status. And according to the genetic quality, we will decide if to call to fattening uh, or go for treatment. And then the pregnant cows, um, we just have to wait. We will start selecting by fertility. We will check which cow got pregnant first and um, they will be identified as the best cows for the next pregnancies. Some results. This is um, Bulacan, Santa Maria. Santa Maria Bulacan in Deiri, Holstein Sahiwal, we got 50, 56% using only FTI without bulls. Another case in San Jose del Monte, 50%, no bulls. Peñaranda, Nueva Oxija, we got 55%. In Brahman, <clears throat> in Bukindon, one experience last year, we got 50% using FTI plus 23% from bulls, total pregnancy rate 
73% um, in only uh, three months of breeding season. Another experience in Sumilao, uh, Bukindon also. This is in Wagyu. Wagyu and Wagyu crossbreed. We got 56% uh, pregnancy from FTI plus 27 uh, from the bulls. Sorry, here is, yeah. 83% total pregnancy rate. General Santos, we did an experience with Cimental and Cimental crossbreed. We got 40% from FTI. That's already good considering that that farm, they never, they never did the uh, insemination for uh, 20 years. So it was a good result. So after all of this information, um, you will have to, to think you have to ask yourself uh, with the current conditions of your farm, are you improving your genetics? How fast are you improving the genetics? Uh, are you uh, inbreeding the cattle? What is your actual calving interval? Mm -hmm. How many calves are you producing per year? Are you, are you near or are you close to get the one calf per cow per year? How many days are taking your cows to get pregnant? Mm -hmm. After this, this period, the red one, how many days they are taking to get pregnant again? Mm -hmm. So the, those are some variables that you have to check. When do you know if your cow is pregnant or not? This is important. Some farms, they only know if the cow is pregnant or not when they supposed to have the calving and cannot, cannot be like that. You are waiting for nine months for the cow to have a calf and you are waiting for nothing. She was empty or open for so long eating, uh, spending resources for um, non-producing. <clears throat> what is the daily cost of an unproductive cow? That will depend on, on the farm, that's uh, case by case, but at the daily cost of one cow is high if you, if you count for many cows. And how long it will take for you to get 80 to 85% consumption right using only bulls the whole year? Mm -hmm. So it's a good question. First, uh, you don't know when the cow got pregnant from the bull. Maybe you are waiting for uh, the cow to have the calf. You will not get anything after nine months. So your conception rate will be very low. <clears throat> uh, this is a, a local client. He's from, he's from Bulacan. Uh, we interviewed him once and he said, it is so important that you can get your cows pregnant as early as possible. This method, FTI, will be more accepted by farmers like me by just letting them know that they, have, they can have more pregnant cows in less time, unlike the ordinary method using only heat detection and or bulls. So it's a good opportunity for the business to grow. <clears throat> Conclusions. FTI and ultrasound are effective tools for improving everything what I said, genetics, pregnancy, selection, fertility, reducing labor costs, resources, improving efficiency, productivity, and profitability. But we, you, you have to consider that it's not a receipt that will replace good nutrition, good health, and good management. It has to be incorporated in, um, in the farm as a tool for improving. We have to check those conditions first. Um, this is a, a, a personal thought. There is, no, there is nothing more expensive in livestock farming than try to get milk or meat from a bad cow. It's very expensive. Probably it's not a direct cost for you because you are not spending daily, right? You don't see that uh, the, the money is going, but it's going in resources. It's going in labor, it's going in feeds, it's going in time. Hmm? So consider to invest in new genetics, new technology, to train your staff and to um, adjust to the new management tools. Hmm? The farm owner should be a businessman, okay? Not a simple farmer. The farm owner should uh, think about his farm as a company and the farm should be considered as a profitable business. So um, I invite the, the farmers, I invite the people in the industry to learn more about this, this technology um, it has many advantages, as you can see. Um, so yes, I invite you all guys. Thank you so much for, for attending this, this webinar. Um, 
if X one wants to finalize with some words or comments, thank you so much. Okay, thank you, uh, Alfonso, for the um, for explaining to to the viewers how how's the how FTA is done and uh, what's the sound. Uh, just to wrap up, uh, kabaka ang papasimplihin natin ang fixed time AI kumpara sa conventional AI ang mga madalas kasi nang nagiging problema natin sa pag uh, sa pag wala ata ako okay you're, you're still good though okay good good all right all right okay so isa sa nagiging uh, madalas na problema natin sa lalo sa pag AI is yung uh, yun nga yung sinasabi ni Alfonso yung sa heat detection madalas classic um, error sa farm is madalas nangyari uh, kapag kayong baka naglande sa gabi so paano ngayon yung AI technician natin pupunta doon or ma-identify specifically kung uh, mabibreed na yung baka then ang advantage then is kaya nating ma-program na maayos aside sa pagkakaroon ng established breeding season kung merong tayong way or tool na kung saan paano na natin sa paglalandiin at least by that time sa ganung um, program or system na gawin natin maayos uh, natin kung saan natin siya gusto targetin para uh, after nine months, kung kailan naman na yung baka ay projected na natin yung uh, magkakalagay baka. Halo sa case na paano mag-am lang head boost na mataas. 100 to 100 paano yun. Lalo may mga farms na nagkakaproblema sa sobrang dami ng baka during calving season ay uh, kulang sila ng... Uh, cowboys or staff or sino tulong doon sa sa pag uh, during calving season dahil ang calving ancho sa mga farm. On the other hand, ang ang ultrasound naman at as early as 30 days makikita na natin yung uh, kung yan ay positive or negative uh, pregnant. At least um, ma meron tayong um, right away na idea kung siya talaga ay may karga. So at least kung hindi man siya magbuntis, uh, alam na natin, po pwede na natin siya mailagay sa susunod na batch kung kailan natin siya ibigay. So yun yung isa sa mga magagandang advantage ng fixed time AI and uh, ultrasound. Hindi lang yan. Uh, isang maganda pa pala sa ultrasound is uh, nakikita natin in terms ng diagnostics, nakikita natin kung merong uh, sakit yung baka, lalit yung tinatawag natin ng payometra na very, very common uh, sa baka. Minsan nagtataka yung mga farmers, bakit hindi ito naglalande? Bakit hindi pa ito nanganganak kahit ilang taon na niyang kasama yung bull sa farm? So, just found out pagka-check, pagka, uh, pagka-silip via ultrasound, yun pala yung kanyang uh, matres eh puno ng, puno ng nana. Just so happen, yun pala, yun na yung tinatawag natin pa yung metra. And another case, bakit yung isa, isang baka, landi siya ng landi, kahit ilang beses, ilang beses siyang sinasampahan, hindi naman siya naglalandi. Pagkasilip, yun pala, meron na pala siyang cyst, which is also a, a very common cases sa mga breeding cows, whether yan ay beef, or under the day. So ilan lang yan sa mga, sa mga advantage na uh, kaya maibigay ng fixed time AI and ultrasound sa mga alaga nating mga baka. Okay, all right. Wow. Uh, thank you very much, Alfonso. Thank you very much for for the very good uh, explanation. I'm sure a lot of our uh, viewers this evening have learned a lot, especially uh, a lot of our overseas Filipino workers who are uh, listening, watching this evening. Uh, they're planning to come home and start their own business. And I guess just to understand the, the dynamics of breeding cows, um, uh, I guess that's a good uh, information that we have shared. And we really appreciate your time uh, with us this evening. 
and as well uh, Doc X, uh, our very own. We really thank you for uh, for your time this evening, and it's very uh, inform informative. No, you know? it's it's good. At, uh, even me, I was learning a lot because uh, I am not a breeding guy. I'm more of the the feeding guy. So I know how to fatten, but uh, my uh, breeding uh, skills is is not that good. Uh, not as good as Neo. Of course. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, of course, uh, we really appreciate that we had learned so much tonight. And uh, now let's uh, maybe let's uh, get some questions from our uh, onboard guest, uh, like Attorney Jeff, who came in uh, as well. Could you say hello to our listeners? Hello, magandang gabi po sa mga uh, tagapakinig sa ating mga magbabaka dyan. Magandang gabi po sa inyo. Magandang gabi sa ating uh, guest speaker, uh, Alfonso and uh, Doc X. Hello. <laughs> Hi, attorney. Good evening. Magandang gabi po. Okay. Uh, may question lang ako kay Alfonso and kay Doc X. No? Uh, nabanggit nyo kanina, you've mentioned a while ago that uh, you will determine uh, uh, after the ultrasound, the, the, uh, after the ultrasound, uh, whether the cow was impregnated by the fixed time AI or the bull, right? So, yeah. can you can you explain further uh, what would uh, determine that uh, that that factor? Uh, yes. What what would uh, make make you uh, determine that this is impregnated by by the bull and this is impregnated by the semen uh, by okay. the uh, ai yeah AI. and uh, that will be by ultrasound we have to do it by ultrasound um remember after 10 days we do the artificial insemination right so that's the day zero that's where that's when we get the 50 percent of our total pregnancies to increase the pregnancies, we join the bulls. We join the bulls after 15 days. Hmm? So that gap, that period, after after the after the, the yeah after finishing the breeding season, hmm? we wait for 30 days after removal of bulls, and the difference of 15 days that will determine because of the size if the calf will be from the FTI or from the bull. Meaning the biggest calves, the biggest, the bigger calves will be from FTI. Why? Because we did the insemination before the bulls. Okay. The smaller, the small calves, the small fetus from 30 days to 90 days, those calves will be from, um, from the bull. So it's just the gap 15 days difference. We will notice by ultrasound. What is he, what is uh, coming from? Okay, thank thank you, Alfonso. So, thank you, Jeff. Opo, ma, ma, mga kabaka, so elaborate ko lang ano. Dito kasi sa ginagamit ng BioNova yung ultrasound, makikita po through the size, no? Through the size. Makikita po sa size kung ano po ang nakapagpabuntis, kung ito po ba eh, yung similya na ginamit niyo through fixed time AI or yung bull na ginamit nyo after 15 days yung follow-up bull. So, ganun po, ano, ganun po nila na-determine kung ano ang nakapuntis. Salamat, uh, Sir Arnel. Okay. Uh, Paul, do you have questions? Oh, it's all good. Okay. Uh, Neo? Well, nakikita ko dito sa uh, mga nag-question uh, on board regarding basically yung cost. Okay. Um, uh, yung cost. Maybe we should we should ask uh, on like uh, to do the fixed time EI Alfonso or Doc X, how many heads of cattle we should have or cows we should have to be viable to go into this fixed time EI? Uh, well, um, normally for you, for the farmer to see results, you should do it in a certain number of cows. Why? You need a volume of cows to see results. We, you cannot do it in one or two. Why? I mean, you can do it, yeah. But you will not, you will not feel the 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 real advantage of the technology 
in only one or two because the pregnancy rate is 50 percent so if from two you just got one okay it's 50 percent but you are not you are not seeing the real advantage of this technology if we consider a volume of cows you will see you will understand why it's useful um for us and considering the the logistics the time that takes for 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 the program we usually do it in 12 uh, starting 12 to 15 cows 12 to 15 cows yeah yeah that's very good uh, regarding the there will be about 20 15 to 20 percent of the cows that we will that will not get uh impregnated because of that if the 50 percent is done by fixed time ei and then the other 30 to 35 would be uh, the exposure with the bull, meaning there's between 15 and 20 uh, percent that cannot be impregnated. Is there any treatment that we could do to make those uh, 15 to 20 percent uh, to become to become uh, pregnant? Yes, uh, that will depend on the exam by ultrasound. Um, not all the cows will have will, will be the same. Some cows they will have some abnormalities. Probably after treatment, after being exposed with the bulls, they develop some, some abnormalities in the in the uterus. For example, cyst. <coughs> um, for example, pyometra. Um, so we have the chance to treat those cows. What will happen? Okay, we increase the open days for those cows, but depending on the genetic quality, if you want to keep that cow, that it has to get. It is it's a bit hard to get pregnant right now but in previous years she got pregnant easily okay try again let's fix the uh, problem that she has and let's try again in the next breeding season okay if it's not a good cow that she's having problems for several years already we cannot get the cow pregnant if she's already five six seven years old and she only has one calf we suggest just to select hmm, select by fertility remove that cow from the herd and you will get cash. Hmm? You will get cash if you fatten, you will get cash if you call the cow, and you will reduce the cost of feeding and labor of that cow, okay? So you will be maintaining less cows in the farm, but you will be maintaining the best cows, not the cows that they are not getting pregnant. That's very good. Now, uh, on, the cost, on the costing side, since we will have 50% uh, just on the fixed uh, time EI and another 30 to 35 on the bull, do you have a, uh, a data on just an operation that is just straight bull, no, no fixed time EI, on what's their, uh, the, the rate of their conception? Farms without using FTI, only bull the whole yeah. year, you mean? Yes, gotcha. yes. We have, we have um, yeah, many experiences. Uh, there are many farms that they are using the bull the whole year. Uh, they are only getting 30 to 35 cows, 30 to 35 percent of the cows pregnant. So let's think about 100 cows. They are getting only 35 or 30 in one year, right? There are 70 cows that they are eating basically for free, spending so many, so much money in resources or uh, probably forage, as I was saying, is, is probably is not a cost that you, you see directly yes. because they are just sitting, right? But those resources can be good for the good cows. Hmm? Um, so in that, in that type of management, it's a bit difficult, the selection, why? Because you are not trying to get the maximum potential of the cow. It's just bad management. Hmm? Yes. Probably you have the best cows, you have um, the best bulls, you are spending so much in that, but you are not expressing what the animal can give to you. Hmm? So it's basically management. So basically, uh, mga kabaka, ang sinasabi ni Alfonso, if you have 100 cows at pag in-expose nyo lang po yan sa bull, ang possible na magiging anak po yan sa loob ng isang taon ay nasa 35 heads lang, hindi po ba attorney? And uh, but if you will put the fixed time uh, EI, that will give you another uh, 50 heads of uh, calf uh, that will bring your calf to from the normal 35 to around 80 to 85 uh, heads of calf. So overall, uh, Alfonso, do you have idea on on how much it will cost to produce a calf uh, uh, on on doing the fixed time EI, provided that out of 100 
you will be producing uh, 80 to 85 cabs. Uh, if you, it will lower, it will of course lower the cost to produce. And we have a rough a figure on how much money uh, we will be spending to produce those 85 heads of calves on a yearly basis provided or uh, for example if we have 100 cows that we put on on this uh, project uh, yes well we have the numbers that will depend so much in the in the farm right in the current yes. status in the in the uh, level performance yeah. yeah of the of the farm it will not be the same for for every farm, because all the farms, they have different uh, costs, right? It depends how intensive is the system. But okay. um, that's why to, to give a, a number right now, um, a number in, in money, uh, will not be comparable for all the farms. All I can say okay. is um, you will be producing more kilograms. At winning, okay, in less time. Hmm? In the example of the Angus, let's transfer that to another breed. You will be producing, let's say, 20 to 30 kilograms more per animal at 205 days the day at winning. Okay, so compute that for 50, for 100, for 150, whatever. Compute just one animal will give you 20 kilograms more. How much is that in money? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a pretty good money. Yeah, that's a lot so of money. The cases uh, is, is, is completely different. We have some numbers for specific farms, um, but all I can say is, is uh, economically viable. Uh, you will see the revenue or the, um, yeah, the profits of implementing this very soon in cow-calf operation because you will have um, heavier calves. And aside from that, you are improving genetics. Hmm? Yes. What will be the value of that? It's a bit also difficult to estimate, to, to put a, a real value in money to the genetics, the genetics that you are improving. Why? Because you will see the genetics in the future. Hmm? Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, no, that's, I think that's a very good answer. Thank you very much for that. We have one question from uh, Raul Emiliano Parr. Do you have injectable hormones to make the cow ovulate? Yeah, that's actually what we do. Okay. Another question from Ju Manawis. Sir, can you briefly discuss CIDR and the hormones that is used commonly and if TAIs, uh, it's, it's those and in, in row? Yeah, uh, well, aside from the cedar, that's a, a device that is impregnated with one hormone that is progesterone. The combination of the progesterone with another hormones like uh, stradiols, like um, GnRH, um, will make the cows to restart the cycle. Remember, in the protocol, day zero is the starting of the new follicular wave. The combination of the hormones will make the cows uh, start a new cycle go and hit, ovulate, and we can inseminate at the same time. Okay, that's very good. Thank you very much. Uh, Doc X, um, yep. may, may isang tanong ko dito. Normally, how many times can a healthy cow get pregnant during its lifespan? Ah, uh, nako. Uh, Haba-haba uh, niyan. Kaano... Uh, Ilang beses sa pagkakas? Ilang beses mabuntis mag ang healthy na ano? Na mabuntis ang healthy, provided it's healthy and uh, with good uh, good condition. How many times siya pwedeng mabuhay bago siya makal? Well, ang average life pa naman kasi kung gagawin natin technical, pwede natin masabi 5 years, 7 years or some pwede pang mga anak ng around 10 years 12 years, 13 years, so pwede. And it has been proven sa mga ilang farms. Yes. Kahit na kahit na matatanda na or sobrang payat, pero matakin mo, uh, yearly, yearly nanganganak sila. Which is uh, very good. Ang isang admiration ko dyan, nakikita ko yan madalas sa uh, sa mga native. Yun yung hang-up sa kanila. Then there are, all, uh, there are also some uh, Brahman, so talagang umabot pa na 15 years. And yung katawan nila, 
okay pa rin. It, it can still uh, sustain yung uh, prolif- prolific kasi nila all throughout the year. So, yung iba naman, uh, may mga operations na um, hanggang ano lang sila nagpapalaki, uh, nagpapabuntis, mga 8 years to 10 years. May mga ganong, uh, yung mga ganong farms, may mga ganong practice. Uh, yung iba naman, yun nga, pinapaabot hanggang kaya magbuntis, maganda pa record May mga ganong cases. So, different practices. Okay. Maybe, Al- Alfonso, um, uh, in your experience, bro, um, like a cow from, what would be the best cow? Like, how many calves a beast cow could give us in his li- in her lifetime? Uh, well, I've seen cases, cows of 14, 15 years old, they gave already 11 calves, okay. 12 calves, and they still get pregnant. So it's, it's, um, it's a matter also of uh, the breed. There are breeds that they, um, they are more fertile when they are old. It's not the, the, um, it's not the case of the dairy. The Holstein, for example, the, li- the lifespan of, of the breed is, is short, Shorter. probably due to the um, intensive management that we apply to that type of, of animal. So the rustic animals, the, the breeds that they have more rusticity, they usually have um, more years and uh, they can produce, uh, if they are healthy, uh, a good number of calves. Oh, that's, that's very good. So at the moment, uh, what are the type of breeds that you are, based on your, what you are doing now, the, the, the Bionova, what uh, breeds of uh, animals, the semen that you are using uh, all over the country at the moment? Okay, uh, well, several. We are using uh, Brahman, we are using Wagyu, we had experience with Cimental, we had experience with Charolais. Uh, we have a lot of experience with Wagyu as well. Okay. That's in beef. Um, also Angus, we did some in, in North, North Luzon. Um, in Dairy, basically uh, Holstein and Jersey. We have also a selection of uh, sex semen for, for dairy. Sex semen is the conventional semen that has been treated for producing only females. So you will have 90, 95% chances of getting a female if you use that. So that's, is that another process uh, all in all or just the same? There's just a treatment prior to the EI. No, the semen just come um, with the treatment. Just uh, it comes selected from the from the laboratory. It's an additional treatment that they do uh, in the laboratories in the central of, of, of semen. Um, it could be a bit more expensive, maybe two or three times more expensive than the conventional, but the chances of getting a female uh, will be ninety five percent. So that's very useful, especially for the dairy operations, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Okay. Have a uh, okay, question. We... Okay. Yes. Yes, uh, Alfonso and Doc, I have a question. So regarding the cost, so basically, how much? So you say it would be minimum fifteen heads, so you could uh, visit the farm, correct? Yeah. The ideal is to have a group of 12, 15 heads for okay. uh, to to see the results, basically. Okay. So first, you will evaluate the farm. Correct. Yes, the initial step. What we do now is uh, with with new farms, with um, farms that we don't have so much information because you saw the requirements, right? The requirements yeah. are many in body condition mm-hmm. score, with facilities, uh, with the staff, uh, with the nutrition, well, many things. So we offer an initial evaluation to the farm for them to know what is the status, right? If they can, if they are ready to start the genetical improvement program and for us to know in with, in what stage should we start. If we can go just directly to do the ultrasound and the zero, or if we need to wait a bit more, hmm, improve a bit the body condition score, improve some things in the facilities, uh, train the staff probably. So we offer a uh, initial study, initial evaluation to solve those um, requirements uh, before to proceed to the program. And will, how much would that cost for the initial evaluation? 
Well, uh, we have some uh, alternatives, but um, if I remember, uh, X, please, can, can you explain that? You have that more clear than me. Uh, uh, example, uh, I go, go ahead, go ahead, Doc. Uh, Doc. Doc, go ahead. I think the audio, uh, Doc's audio is a bit Okay, okay. Clear, claro, claro. Opo. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, well, ang aming doon regarding doon sa as a, yung our service Cost. na uh, farm yes. uh, farm assessment and recommendation, well, nag-range siya ng let's say yung um, package is ultrasound and farm assessment uh, cost uh, 25,000. Uh, malina, malina ba? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Yes, yes. Ayan, ayan. 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 Yun. Per so, visit. It's 25,000 visit. Okay. Yeah. Then included din doon yung uh, 15 heads na ultrasound. Okay. Okay. 25,000 15 okay. heads. Then also, so, okay. Anyway, uh, I guess... Okay. Okay. Uh, medyo choppy choppy. But anyway, I guess uh, we it's it's about uh, uh, eight uh, eighteen in the evening already. So, guys, uh, once again, we really thank you for your time tonight. Uh, maybe we'll do another series. Uh, it's really interesting and and time really uh, uh, runs so quick for us. So, but anyway, uh, for our parting words. Uh, Alfonso, uh, do you have a final message? Yes, well, uh, first, thank you so much, uh, Arnel, Paul, uh, Neo, for, for this opportunity. For us, it's very important um, to reach the people, to get information, to spread the advantage of, of this, because it's useful for, for the industry, for everyone. Um, even for you guys that you do fattening, but if you want to fatten more animals, we have to get more cows pregnant, right? Agree. Uh, it's useful for everyone. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to add that this, yeah, it's a topic. It's a very extensive topic that if you would like to um, extend in another opportunity, uh, we are willing to do it. Um, hopefully, we have the chance to um, expand our explanations. That's so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. If people want to keep in touch with you, uh, where are they going? Well, they can visit our Facebook uh, page, Bionova Livestock, or they can visit our web page, uh, bionova.ph, uh, or simply send an email, if they use email, alfonso at bionova.ph. Uh, we will be ready to answer all the questions, all the queries. Uh, we are always available. So thank you so much. F just feel free to ask um, whatever you, you need. Thank you very much. We really appreciate your time, uh, Bro Alfonso. Thank you, Alfonso. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Alfonso. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Paul Neo. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Uh, Doc X, uh, do you have a message for our uh, listeners? Um, I don't know if I'm going to ask you, but first of all, thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, please go to our website. Uh, Bionova Farm Assessment. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you Uh, nandoon sa aming website and FB page. Uh, yun lamang siguro. At uh, siguro magkita-kita din tayo sa labas. At uh, maraming salamat uh, sa aming pag, uh, sa pag-invita sa amin. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, X. And of course, Thank you, uh, si Attorney Jeff. Attorney, uh, do you have parting uh, words? And of course, may binibenta ba tayong baka dyan? Saan yung iba isi, ha? <laughs> Thank you, Sir Arnel. Uh, sa farm namin, meron kami mga pambenta, mga breeding bulls at saka yearling bulls. Uh, yun na lang po ang available. Wala na po kaming available na female. Pasensya na po. Uh, baka po sa December. Marami po nag inquire Alam ko po, pasensya na po. Wala po po kaming available sa ngayon. 
Uh, baka po sa December magkaroon po kami ng available sa females. Uh, maraming salamat sa Bionova, uh, sa pamumuno ni Alfonso at ni Doc X. Uh, ito pong Bionova ay nakatulong po sa aming farm. Uh, nakapagsubok na rin po kami ng fixed time AI. Maganda naman po ang resulta at uh, yung ating mga idagdag ko lang ano, yung uh, isang kagandahan sa ultrasound ay yung mga tinatawag nating machora. Gustong-gusto nating inahin. Ang ganda ng quality, ang ganda na itsura. Subalit ng anak lang na minsan, ayaw na ulit mga anak. So tinatawag nating machora. So ang nangyayari, papakatay na natin. Uh, nagagawa po ng paraan nila Bionova na ito eh, ma-reactivate ulit o mag-ovulate ulit yung paglalandi nila. No? Ma-reactivate ulit yung paglalandi nila. So through the uh, treatments na ibibigay nila, wow. syempre malalaman po ito through the help of uh, ultrasound. So yun lang po. Maraming salamat po. So kung gusto po ninyong uh, uh, may katanungan kayo kay Attorney Jeff, uh, Attorney Jeff, ma- ang kanila pong Facebook page is ang M. Serrano Livestock Farm. Tama po, Attorney? Apo. Tama Apo. po, tama po. Magtanong lang po kayo doon at kami po eh, handang sumagot basta kaya po namin. Maraming salamat oh. po. Thank you very much. And of course, uh, Boss Neo, may available mo ba tayong bull at kailan po pwedeng ibenta yan? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, uh, yes, pero naman kaming bulls. Just visit na lang yung aming FB page, yung 5A Cattle Breeding. And doon yung mga available bulls namin. And uh, thank you so much pala kaila Doc and kaila Sir Alfonso for ano, soon. Meron na silang gagamitin na 5A Brahman Semen. Ang sila, ano, kinokontrata ko na. <laughs> wow. Anyways... That's, anyway, that's thank you. Good. Thank you then. Thank you, Arnel. Thank you, Sir Paul. Ah, okay. And, uh, thank you, Boss Neil. Okay. Uh, partner Paul, uh, see your parting words, bro. Uh, okay. Uh, maraming salamat po sa lahat ng nakasama namin ngayong gabi. Uh, sana po sa susunod na linggo, uh, muli po namin ngayong makasama. At uh, naway marami po kayong mapulot na mga makabulong bagay dito sa aming uh, kinagawa. No? Uh, again, Pagtulungan po natin ang industriya ng pababaka dito sa Pilipinas. Ang sa gayon po, uh, mas marami po tayong ma-produce na karne para sa mamamayang Pilipino. No? Uh, again, maraming salamat po at magandang gabi mula dito sa Makati. Oh, thank you very much, uh, kasamang Paul. And of course, um, bago ako magpaalam, gusto ko lang batiin yung mga kapwa ko OFW. Uh, magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. And of course, yung mga kababayan natin diyan sa Manila, uh, uh, mayroon pong balik probinsya program ngayon ang ang uh, ating gobyerno at uh, kung gusto niyo pong bumalik sa probinsya, tingnan niyo po itong industriya ng pagbabaka at baka posible po na maging part po ng inyong pagbalik probinsya dahil hindi po ganoon kahirap alagaan ang mga baka at alam niyo naman na pagdating sa sakit ang pagbabaka ay uh, mas matibay i-compare natin sa ibang uh, alaga katulad ng manok o at saka baboy. So ayan po And of course, uh, yung mga kababayan ko dyan sa Luzon, na yung pag-arabiyo, apo, agyaman kami. Uh, nga, uh, nakabuya kayo man tatan rabi eh. Uh, agyaman kami ron unay. And of course, sa Southern Tagalog, magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat at maraming salamat. And uh, sa Vistayas, sa mga kaiksuna na ito sa Vistayas, nagan kayong salamat. Uh, oga, next uh, Friday, ang, uh, ang ati pong oras ay 8, 8 to 9 na po tayo dahil uh, marami pong nagre-request na medyo ilate natin ang punte dahil nga po sa kadahilanan ng iba at 7 ay kumakain pa. So, we will see you next Friday. We will, uh, we will have another interesting guest. We're looking for uh, a lot of Filipinos who are abroad at the moment and very successful on their uh, cattle farms. So, abangan po ninyo yan. Uh, later on, may mga segments din po tayo sa kambing. And we will invite you as well to come join us. And of course, sa mga uh, kababayan namin, mga Ilonggo, maayog yun ng gabi sa inyo tanan. Uh, pasalamat kami nga nag-onboard ka mo karong gabi. And of course, back here in Mindanao, uh, maayong gabi sa inyong tanan. And of course, patiin lang namin ang pinakabig boss po namin sa lahat, si Mr. and Mrs. Delphine Alcuriza, boss DA. Kaya kami nandito ay dahil po sa inyo. Of course, last uh, week, hindi ko nabati si Ma'am Joyce Alcuriza. Uh, Ma'am Joyce, magandang gabi po sa iyo. And of course, sa pamilya ni Paul dyan sa Makati. 
And uh, dito sa amin sa Mindanao, pinakamaganda po namin kapitana, si Kapitan Tubo sa Barangay Glamang, ang mag pinakamaganda rin po namin mayor, si Mayor uh, Hani Lumayag Mati po ng Pulumulok. Of course, ang aming uh, magbabakang governor, uh, Governor uh, Ray Tamayo Jr. ng South Cotabato, um, ang ex-governor namin sa Sarangani, na client din po namin sa custom feeding, si Governor Mix Dominguez, and of course, ang incumbent namin governor ngayon, si Governor St. Mayor po natin na Mayor ng General Santo City, si Mayor Brother uh, Ronel Rivera. Sir, magandang gabi po sa inyo. Ang panghuli ko po ay para po sa mga kaibigan po natin sa gobyerno at saka sa Department of Agriculture in particular, uh, sa Bureau of Animal Industry, ang Adelaide River Farms po, and of course, uh, I guess, even the Bayonoba, uh, is uh, extending our full support po para sa industry po ng large ruminants and of course even the small ruminants po dito sa Pilipinas. And hopefully the Bureau of Animal Industry kay uh, Boss Dr. Rony Domi uh, Domingo, uh, Director, magandang gabi po sa inyo. At uh, sana po sir, sa mga darating po ng mga segments po na natin ay ma-invite po kayo uh, ng Adelaide River Farms para po mapahayag din po natin sa ating mga listeners po uh, yung mga programa po ng uh, Bureau of Animal Industry. And of course, sa aming Brad, uh, very worshipful uh, Ariel Kayanan, uh, very uh, the USEC po natin for operations. Baka may mga programa po ang Department of Agriculture. Uh, ang Adelaide River Farms po ay handa po na uh, makipagtulungan para ma-improve po natin yung industriya ng pagbabaka dito sa Pilipinas. And of course, kay Manong Dar, Secretary Dar, uh, Manong Willie ng Bangarabiyo, Um, ito po, kababayan nyo ni Arnel Corpus from Adelaide River Farms. Ito yung Mindanao. Secretary, uh, we are more than willing to help kung ano po ang may tulong namin sa cattle industry. At uh, marami po tayong mga kababayan na excited po na magbaka. Eh, kung meron pong uh, programa po ang Department of Agriculture na gusto nyo pong ipaabot sa ating mga magsasaka, mga magbabaka at sa mga OFW ng uh, kanilang probinsya. Ang Adelaide River Fong ay nandito po. Dito kami po. Tap no tumulong iti programa, iti gobyerno. So, yun lamang po. At uh, ang bilis po ng oras. Uh, ayan, 8.30 na po. So, I really thank you uh, guys, Alfonso, Doc X, Busneo, and uh, Attorney Jeff, and of course, of course, Paul. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, God bless us all. Mabuhay po ang Pilipinas. Goodbye po. Thank you. Goodbye.